So we've built an RS latch and we built a D latch. These are two uh, sequential devices, fundamental sequential devices that allow us to store and retrieve information. If we're going to use them to construct design sequential circuits that have that we have some control over, that we say, I want to store this information now and that information later, we need some um, specific way to talk about these devices. Uh, we're going to actually use two different kinds of tables to describe the features of these storage elements. Uh, these are characteristic tables and excitation tables. I'm going to walk through what these both do, and then I'm going to show you the characteristic table and the excitation table for the RS latch and for the D latch. The characteristic table tells you what will happen uh, given a particular state input combination. If I give this device an input, what will the output be, depending on the input and the current state, right? So it says, if I know what the input of the device is, and I know what the current state is, what will happen when the clock cycles? When the clock goes to one and then back to zero, what will be the result, okay? The excitation table is sort of the opposite of that. It says, if I want this device to store a particular value, what do I as the designer have to provide to it as inputs so that when the next clock cycle happens, I know that it will store the value I want to store. So we're exciting the device. We're storing a value in it that we want to see stored. Characteristic table says what happens to the device in any situation. Excitation table says how do I make the device do what I want it to do. So we're going to use both of these tables when we do the design for these circuits, but I want to walk you through these two tables for the two devices we've just built so that you understand how they work. Here are the characteristic table and the excitation table for the RS latch. And remember, we don't really use the RS latch in our designs very much because of that unstable race condition, but it's instructive to look at it so that we can see how these two tables differ. So the characteristic table, again, given the inputs and the current state, what happens, okay? And the excitation table says, given the current state and a desired next state, how do I make that happen, okay? It's the same information, it's just sort of in the opposite order. So given the inputs and the current state, what happens? If S and R are both zero, then the next state will be equal to the current state. I'm holding that memory. If S is zero and R is one, the next state will be zero. I'm resetting the latch to zero. If S is one and R is zero, the next state is one. I'm setting the latch to one. And if S and R are both one, I don't know what the next state is going to be because this is that unstable race condition. When the clock comes to zero, if both of the inputs were one at the same time, that forces this race condition and weird things will happen. The excitation table says, if I want to store a particular value, what inputs do I have to provide to make that happen? Some of this may be clear, but it's very interesting to see what happens here. If I am currently storing a zero, and I want the next thing I store to also be a zero, I actually have two ways I could do that, don't I? When you think about it, I could either hold, which is the obvious way, or I could reset. Reset seems to be like a weird way to do that, but it would work, right? If I if I choose to reset to zero, then I also get a zero, right? So if I'm in state zero and I want to also be in state zero, I have two ways, zero, zero, and zero, one, which means I don't care what R is. R can be a one, R can be a zero. Whatever makes my eventual logic design simpler will be good, right? When we built Carnot Mass with don't cares, some students were a little bit confused. Why, what do these don't cares mean? What situation would I ever find myself in where I don't care what happened? This is one of the places where it happens. I don't care what R is. If I want a zero and I have a zero, I can either hold or reset. It doesn't matter which one because the end result is the same. Now, if I have a zero and I want a one, there's only one way to do that. I have to set. That's a one and a zero. If I have a one and I want a zero, I have to reset. That's a zero one. If I have a one and I would like the next state to also be one, again, there are two ways to do that. I could either uh, set one zero or I could hold zero zero. In both of those cases, I'll get a one and it doesn't matter whether I'm 
holding or setting, the end result will be the same. So again, we don't use RS latches very much, but later in the course, we're going to design a JK flip-flop, and that will use a very similar kind of excitation table, and this will give us lots and lots of don't cares that will significantly simplify the circuits we build. So that's the characteristic table and excitation table for the RS latch. Now, here is the characteristic table and the excitation table for the D latch. Again, the D latch uses an inverter between R and S so that they have to be different. There's no situation in which R and S are both one. If D is one, we set the value to one. If D is zero, we reset the value to zero. So the value stored is just equal to whatever value I put on that input. Very clear, very direct, easy to understand. And the characteristic table and excitation table reflect that. If the input is zero, the next state is zero, regardless of what the current state is. So for a D latch, we always throw away the current state, which again, why would you throw away the current state if the whole point is to store information? You'll see. <laughs> it will become very useful, as you will see later on. We always throw away the current value, and we store whatever is on D. So if the current value on D is 0, we're going to store a 0. If the value that's on D is 1, we're going to store a 1. These are our reset and set conditions. The excitation table is a bit bigger because we have to have four possibilities. If I'm in, If the current value is 0 and the value I want to store is zero. If the current value is zero, the value I want to store is one. If the current value is one and I want to store a zero, if the current value is one and I want to store a one. But as you might have figured out, the D value is just equivalent to the value that I want to store. So if it's if it is a zero and I want a zero, I give it a zero. If it is a zero, I want a one, I give it a one. If it's a one and I want a zero, I give it a zero. And if it's a one and I want a one, I give it a one. So the excitation table says, what do I have to provide to the input of the storage element to make it store the value I want? And the characteristic table says, given that uh, the current state is this and the input is this, what will happen? What, is the, what are the characteristics of this device?